Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. My name is Harsha and I would be the moderator for today's exciting event. I would firstly like to thank you all for taking out the time to attend EdTech Power Hour session hosted by Harbinger. For those who are joining us for the first time, Power Hour is the series of interactive roundtable discussions amongst the industry stalwarts, where they would be discussing about their ideas, experiences, and insights on a particular topic. So the topic for today's discussion would be the secret ingredient to online learning success, human interaction. Before we begin, just a few housekeeping tips. In case you cannot hear the audio, ensure you have selected the right speaker for audio output. You may test the same to see if this is working fine from the audio setting option on the lower left corner of the screen. And if necessary, use a uh, dial in using the phone. With that, it's time for introduction. Our host for today's session is Ullas Bodhankar. Ullas is a passionate EdTech speaker and professional with over 20 years of experience in education and training domain in India and abroad, to include K-12, higher ed, and skilling subnets. Having the expertise in education and training technologies domain with qualification for IIT, XLRI, and Symbiosis. We welcome you, Ullas, and over to you. Thank you very much, Harsha. Thank you very much for that introduction. And I'm very excited to be the host for this uh, very relevant topic today of you know, humanizing e-learning. But right at the outset, let me scare the audience and uh, you know, tell them, did you know that more than 80% of the learners want to go back to the classroom? What's going to happen to all the EdTech investments? Okay, things are not that bad. I must also share with you that 100% of the learners know that they are not going back to the classroom. The way the e-learning is evolving, yeah, what is going to be available will be a beautiful blend of best of both the worlds. So we're gonna to discuss today, firstly, in terms of what is the value of human interaction in e-learning, uh, how some of the leading platforms are integrating human integration, how technology is helping in enabling this, and what are some of the challenges. And then finally, some frameworks and tools that can help uh, ed tech companies. So with that as the background, let me straight away go on to the panelists. And uh, first and foremost, let me welcome Lance. Hi, Lance. How are we doing? Lance Hi, Lance. Hi, Lance is the education lead at Agora. And uh, may I request Lance that you give a brief introduction of yourself and the company? Sure, Bulas. Thanks for, for having me. And uh, I'm very excited to, hear, to be here and share uh, my insights today. Uh, I'm Lance, I'm the educator lead at Agora, uh, which is a public company listed on NASDAQ. And uh, Agora is a platform as a service provider. And we offer SDKs or in other words, uh, building blocks to developers so they can embed interactive video in other calls, real-time messaging, and also recording in their applications. So our goal is to enable meaningful human interaction by a, a real-time engagement. So in education space, we are empowering some of the best online learning experiences with a reliable network and a rich student engagement tools. Excellent. Welcome, Lance. Let me move on to our next panelist uh, is June. He is the CEO and co-founder at Halo. Yeah, June, welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Um, my name is June, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Halo, uh, which is a real-time online marketplace for language learning. So at the click of a button, students are able to attend live classes with a native speaker and three to five other students in small groups. Uh, anytime, anywhere. So for them to be able to, you know, really find opportunities to speak around topics that they're interested in. So uh, we really empower people to become fluent and also dream big through language learning. Uh, we started our company about four years ago. Um, we officially launched our product two years ago. We already have about a million students, uh, finding about 13 to 14,000 new students per week. So we're excited to continue to grow and help language learners become more fluent and find more opportunities in life. Excellent, great. June, thank you so much and welcome you once again. And before I start bombarding you with questions, let me just set the context and talk about the need. Yeah, in these troubled times, you know, learners need 
your presence online. And when we are talking about troubled times, I think nothing defines troubled times better than what we have just gone through or what we are going through. You know, and uh, what is uh, what is absent is actually the presence. So presence in terms of uh, teaching presence, you know, the physical environment and uh, the facilitation, the social presence in terms of interaction with uh, colleagues and other students and peers, and uh, cognitive presence, you know, which is uh, central to student learning. When we talk about problem solving and creative thinking, you know, it is a combination of personal understanding and uh, shared dialogue. So definitely there is a need for, uh, you know, online learning to evolve and integrate these, you know, three kinds of, you know, uh, presence needs, uh, you know, that are very much uh, evident. So having seen the need, let us look at what is the opportunity. Yeah. So on one hand, you have technology. On the other hand, we have the human interface. Right. And uh, what we saw with the, you know, onset of pandemic is that educators were forced to move to available technology and you know put their uh, classes online you know and uh, this happened very well i think we must thank uh, technology for being there and the entire education uh, you know uh, system did not collapse you know it, it did a smooth transition so that was a great transition from what is called as tle you know the traditional learning environment to the ole which is the online learning environment and what we see happening now is uh, addition of a lot of features and there is so much of innovation happening uh, so, like we said, that there is a model which is the blended model which is emerging. You know, so from a TLE to OLE to now we are moving to what is uh, being called as SILE, which is social and innovative learning environment. Yeah. So there is a huge opportunity to contribute to this, uh, you know, evolving uh, blended, uh, you know, ecosystem uh, of education. So you know, there is scope for innovation. There is huge amount of uh, investment that is happening. Yeah, so there is a great opportunity. So let me straight away go to Lance with the first question. Yeah, Lance, what are your thoughts on the value of human interactions in the online learning space? Yeah, thanks, Willas, for, for the question. I think to uh, elaborate on the value of human interactions, we need to first look at some of the challenges of asynchronous learning, where students are often learning alone uh, with pre-recorded video content and not typically interacting with others. So some of the challenges on the student end is that they don't receive instant feedback or personalized guidance. And they may not have the opportunities to participate in live collaboration or any uh, real-time activities since they're studying long and they, they won't be able to work in teams, not to mention any project-based learning, right? So um, that have another problem is that it requires much more self-discipline on the student end since they, they don't often get enough support and they may lack motivation from interactive learning activities or experiences. And uh, because this lack of student engagement it is actually making education providers frustrated because they, they see a lack of student engagement and also a low course completion rate. And it often has business impact for commercial providers as well as they see a low paying customer conversion rate and customer retention rate. And it hurts business, especially for those who, uh, who offers a subscription model because they will see a lower renewal rate because students are not engaged and they are less committed to, to learning on their platforms. They may, they may also miss uh, some of the monetization opportunities as asynchronous learning doesn't fully capture student demands there will be students needing something on the left-hand side, for example, like instant feedbacks, personalized guidance. They want to participate, participate in real-time activities and, and chat with uh, peers. So uh, by offering asynchronous learning alone, they may miss uh, to, to capture these demands, who, uh, which students may also pay uh, for a higher price tag. One of the example is uh, Duolingo. Although it's a fa uh, fantastic learning apps, but most of the content today is still asynchronous. And uh, according to their form and uh, some of the reports by Reuters, their completion rate is pretty low. Uh, Duolingo Tree, which uh, is uh, what uh, Duolingo can offer for a certain language, the completion rate is falling behind 0.1% overall. And 80% uh, of its revenue 
Duolingo's revenue is actually, is actually coming only from 4% of its users. That means most of the uh, Duolingo's users are not paying anything, is using that for free. Yeah, so that's very sad. So I hope, uh, you know, Duolingo is looking at, uh, you know, synchronization a little more seriously. It's not for anything, at least to make sure that students complete the course. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but I'll consider that if, if I were Duolingo as well. So actually, uh, for from these slides, we can tell the value of human injections, which uh, often in the format of synchronized learning. And these can address some of the challenges of asynchronous learning that we just mentioned. Uh, so, so the value of human interactions are really twofold. In terms of learning outcomes, it can increase student engagement and intention uh, and retention because it creates a community where students can receive support both from educators and also peers. And uh, uh, it also enables some personalized guidance with more attentiveness to individual students. And it also can be a great, a great chance or opportunities to embed social emotional learning. And for language learning, it's also important because it can create a immersive learning environment <coughs> for language learners. And uh, it also adds commercial value to market players as it can generate new revenue that complement asynchronous component. It unlocks new business model, reduce churn, and also increase overall customer life time value by offering this premium live uh, interactive experiences. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic, Lance. I think uh, what you've highlighted is that, uh, you know, the value of human interaction is not only for student engagement and retention, you know, but I think uh, it has a direct impact on the business, you know, not just the business, but it even throws up opportunities to, you know, add uh, additional revenues, you know. So that's very interesting, and I'm sure that will appeal to a lot of, uh, you know, startups uh, here who are venturing into the it takes space. Okay, so with that, let me move on to June. And uh, June, what are your thoughts on uh, uh, this environment yeah. uh, with, with human interaction? Yeah. Yeah, my thoughts are, you know, human interaction plays a critical role in learning and education, right? So if you look at human history, this is how we have been learning, you know, for hundreds of decades. And this will be always the case because learning at the end of the day comes down to two things. The first part is, you know, gathering and observing knowledge and information, which includes, you know, watching videos, listening to audio, reading books, uh, attending classes, all these wonderful things for you to be able to gather information and understand the knowledge, right? And the second part, which is also important is application. So people or learners need to be able to apply what they learn in their real lives for them to be able to complete their learning experience. So this could include things like, you know, being able to interact with the teacher, asking questions, uh, attending group sessions, um, sharing your thoughts. So when you actually do all these things together, learning becomes complete and you're going to be able to really master the knowledge that you're trying to learn. Uh, for example, language learning. English learners in different countries spend most of their time in their textbooks and not speaking. But the best way to learn a new language is by actually, you know, speaking, practicing, interacting with real people and immersing yourself in the culture 24 seven. That's how you have learned your native language. And for you to be able to learn a new language as well, you need to be applying what you learn, not just reading books, learning about grammar or vocab, but you need to be actually interacting because that's the whole purpose of learning a new language, which is learning how to communicate with others. So when we have human interaction, language learning becomes, you know, fun, interactive, engaging, and, and effective all at the same time. And I'd like to share another example in the next slide where um, if you can see the graph that I'm sharing with you here, uh, cohort-based courses with human interactions between students and teachers have a 96% completion rate compared to just three to 6% of open online courses uh, like you know, YouTube and some other learning platforms out there. So what this means is that people are more likely to continue learning when there is accountability and also human interaction. 
So in my opinion, if you're a learning platform and if you don't have this human interaction component embedded in your platform, uh, I think you're falling behind and you're not probably providing your students with the best value or learning experience in my opinion. Absolutely, June, absolutely. I think you brought out, uh, you know, the human value, you know, especially in terms of uh, language learning, <laughs> I think it's extremely important. Yeah, so I yeah. think what we've understood in terms of, uh, you know, the value in e-learning is uh, essentially, uh, you know, the, uh, the one is, of course, the fact that, uh, you know, we want students to complete. I think that point was brought out by both of you, you know, the completion rate has to be high because we, at the end of the day, you want the student who's enrolled, you know, to come out successfully. Yeah. And the second element, which I think uh, is also very important, is the social angle where we're talking about, you know, fun, interaction, and engagement. You know, so I think there are no two ways of kind of uh, arguing about this point. There is a tremendous value, uh, you know, uh, here by doing this integration, and there is, uh, you know, absolutely no escape. All right, great. So with that, uh, let me go back to Lance and uh, ask another question. So. So how are the, you know, it takes companies embedding and leveraging uh, this human interaction through their platforms? Yeah, uh, at Agora, we have seen uh, many tech companies leveraging below elements to build a very uh, interactive online learning experience. So on the uh, left-hand side, uh, you will see how uh, teachers communicate with students virtually in real time. And uh, we'll see some real-time engagement tools like live audio and video chat. And uh, some of the teachers will also use online breakout room where it can be a great option for to conduct a group discussion and also for team competition. And uh, we also have real-time messaging allowing teachers to, to chat with students or among peers. We also have live streaming uh, options for them as well. So on the right hand side, you will see many uh, student engagement tools, for example, interactive whiteboard, uh, where they can collaborate on uh, annotations, uh, teachers can do uh, uh, screen sharing as well. And they can also opt to record the live session so the students can review and also play back wherever they need. And also we provide uh, data analytics tools for this uh, education providers so they can monitor the quality of the communication overall. They can check how reliable the network was, uh, what is the overall latency or frame rate for, for each of these sessions. And on the next slide, uh, here are some examples of how ad tech companies leverage our solutions and customize their online learning platforms while embedding human interactions in different use cases, which differs in class size or uh, teacher student ratio. So the first three are very straightforward. Uh, we categorize them in different classes from one-on-one, -on -one, uh, private, to one to many uh, in a smaller scale and one to many in a larger scale setting, where it's often lecture halls, and universities or large scale tutoring providers. And uh, what I wanna highlight is the last two, uh, which are sort of innovative. Uh, the fourth one is uh, hybrid learning, where uh, th these providers are supplementing on-site teachers with online lectures to provide a more flexible and interactive experience. And it could be a great model if you run brick and mortar learning centers and want to scale your business without many fully fledged or well-trained educators. So uh, hybrid learning can solve these type of uh, the shortage of experienced teachers while also reducing the overall teacher uh, training cost. And the last but not least is the online breakout room setting. And uh, it's similar to hybrid classroom where uh, multiple teachers are attending and helping students, but they are both online. And it is often uh, when one lecture online was paired with uh, a one or multiple teaching assistants TAs who answered the questions and managed the group discussions or activities. And these supercharge uh, student engagements since they can uh, conduct group discussions, team collaboration, competition, these type of activities but it can also improve uh, customer satisfaction uh, and also student retention rate. And it also, for business side, uh, it also improves unit economics because it can be a great uh, scalability and it also optimize cost structure compared to one-on-one -on -one, uh, private tutoring and also in you know, classroom uh, settings because you can do that in a larger scale uh, without sacrificing student engagement. Yeah, so- yeah, <laughs> 
Sorry, go ahead. I thought, yeah, go yeah. ahead. So, so these are some of the options that we see our customers who are some of the leading ad tech uh, providers, uh, how they leverage uh, human interactions and real-time engagement. Yeah, yeah, thanks for sharing that. And I'm sure, uh, you know, some of the examples that you've mentioned in terms of customers, uh, we are, uh, you know, sharing their links on the chat so that uh, you know, people can look at them more closely. I just saw, um, you know, I think, uh, Arun Kumar raised his hand. So I just wanted to say that, you know, we would want to take all the questions in the end. So, you know, we would like to come back to you, uh, you know, at that time. Yeah, so Lance, I think uh, Agora has a wonderful, uh, you know, online uh, engaging platform. And I think some of the features we saw are, uh, you know, you know, it's, it's kind of an evolved mo uh, model of uh, teaching learning. So, and again, you've also shown that, you know, it can be deployed for different, uh, learning environments, you know, whether it is a one-on-one -on -one or it's a larger audience, you know, so that is great. I just want to bring up another related point. Uh, you know, we were talking to this uh, education administrator at a university. You know, he said, uh, you know, with all this uh, thing transitioning to the virtual world, you know, we've got this uh, very nice teaching learning platform. You know, the teachers are very happy. But you know what, I have to manually pick up the attendance from the attendance system and you know, post it in the learning system, and then I have to take it from here, and I have to put it in the certification system. You know, so that doesn't make my life very easy. Yeah, so he was right. So, so essentially, the point is that in large, uh, you know, uh, higher education or you know, education institutes, you have all these systems. You have a student uh, admission system. You have a student registration system. You have an attendance system. Then you may have an LMS, or you have a you know, teaching learning platform, and then you may have a you know, assessment system, a certification system. So all these systems need to talk to each other. It doesn't mean, I mean, we have to look at that entire ecosystem holistically, but it doesn't mean that you create one mammoth of a system. It just means that you have these individual systems pretty, doing pretty well, but we need to make, make them talk to each other. And I think, you know, integration is a very important uh, aspect uh, and important for uh, education institutes. I think Agora has a whole lot of partners who, uh, you know, help in doing this integration. And I'm happy to say that even Harbinger, he have great amount of expertise, having done uh, you know, lots and lots of uh, integration, not just uh, you know across uh, various education applications, but also from you know for example like uh, uh, linking an Agora platform or a Zoom platform with an existing LMS uh, education institute. Yeah. So I think this is a very important related point that while we uh, you know provide uh, innovative. Uh, you know, uh, featured platforms for enhancing the learning, we must also look at it holistically so that, you know, the, the end user has an integrated uh, system in uh, in place. Yeah, so with that, uh, let's go to June and ask him that, you know, how do you perceive the value of such a combined, uh, you know, human interface uh, teaching platform? Yeah, thanks for asking the question. I mean, so, the reason why I wanted to start Hollow is because I wanted to provide language learners with the opportunity to speak and practice anywhere, anytime. Right. So, as an immigrant, you know, I moved from Korea to the United States when I was a teenager, about 14 years ago. Um, so, I understand the challenges of learning a new language, and the biggest one being was um, finding opportunities to speak. Right. So. Everything we do at Hollow is around speaking and connecting students with the right teachers and students so that they can learn actually how to communicate and interact with other people through all these platforms available nowadays. I mean, Zoom, Agora, you know, all these wonderful platforms, we have the technologies. If you think about the past, I don't know if you guys remember 15 years ago, 15 years ago, when I first moved here, I couldn't call my friends in Korea, for example. I had to rely on Skype or I had to rely on you know, other technologies. But nowadays I can just call anybody from anywhere. And um, you know, there are 1.5 English learners throughout the world, for example, and they all have a mobile phone. So we do have all these technologies that we need to be able to make learning more interactive, fun and engaging. And, and if, if you look at the screen, that's kind of how our live classes work, for example. So on Holo, you know, students can join live classes with a, you know, native speaking teacher and three to five students for them to be able to learn and practice together around particular topics that they're interested in. So as you can see, students can ask questions, 
interact with the teacher and apply what they learn at the same time in the classroom setting. So instead of having to go to a classroom in real, you know, in, in person, you can actually all rely on online virtual classrooms for you to be able to learn from teachers that are not in your country, you know, from countries from the United States or, you know, other countries where na native speakers are able to participate and help you learn a new language. So two years ago, we officially launched our product, as I mentioned before. So right now we have over a million students, finding 14,000 new students per week. Uh, you know, whenever I'm having a bad day, I just come back to this slide and, you know, it makes me feel better, right? <laughs> as an entrepreneur, I would love to continue to make good progress. And, and I'm happy when I can visually and tangibly tell that, oh, wow, we're helping lots of people. Uh, not just learn a new language, but also dream big and reach their full potential. And, and one thing that I want to focus on here on this slide is, you know, if you look at the last number, average daily engagement, 30 minutes compared to 10 minutes at Duolingo, for example. So because of the human interaction that we provide as a company, our students are spending more time practicing and learning, you know, because it's not boring, it's not ineffective. We make language learning fun, effective, engaging, and interactive through all the human interactions that we provide through live classes and also speaking clubs um, on Halo. So in my opinion, uh, it really depends on the industry you're in, but I believe that particularly in language learning, uh, human interaction is probably one of the most important components that we need to provide as a language le learning platform. And we're, we're happy that we're providing that value already. And we're excited to continue to leverage, you know, the technologies that are out there to be able to provide the best language learning experience in the world. Absolutely, June. I think those numbers are very, very impressive. And, you know, uh, this kind of a platform that you have, which is facilitating engagement and interactions, you know, so no wonder, you know, you have these million plus students with, uh, you know, great kind of uh, interaction. Another interesting point that you made was, you know, technology has made the world shrink. You know? So it is now possible with the help of technology to deliver a session which could be attended anywhere in the globe, you know, and you could have access to the best, uh, you know, best instructors, best tutors. And interestingly, you know, uh, being in your own place, you are in a global environment because, you know, even for learning a language, you would be interacting with different accents and different you know, speakers uh, all over the globe. Yeah. So very yeah, interesting. And, and, and yeah. because of globalization, you know, the world is getting smaller and smaller. You know, the competition is inevitable. You know, companies in China, companies in India, companies in the United States are all competing with each other. Uh, but that's good news because we are providing value to students from anywhere, uh, from anywhere. any country. Um, so I think for consumers, for, for learners, for students, it's a great opportunity to find the right platform that works for them so that they can customize their learning experience and, and find the platform that works for them. Because Duolingo, for example, is such a wonderful platform if you're starting to learn a new language, but it probably will not help you become fluent, right? So if you're learning grammar, if you're learning vocab, if you're just getting started, in learning a new language, Duolingo is probably one of the best platforms out there. And if you really want to take your language to the next level, if you want to actually become fluent, uh, there might be a better platform where there's human interaction, there's opportunities to speak and practice. Um, so I think there's a lot of opportunities yeah. thanks to technologies uh, and, and also globalization. Yeah, so I, I completely agree with you, June. And I think the very interesting point here also is that you know, with the help of technology, we are moving to what is called as personalized learning. You know, so everybody doesn't have to get into, you know, one program and, uh, you know, get what they want. Yeah, so depending on what stage of learning you are, you can really create a learning path for yourself. And I think that's, again, uh, you know, great use of uh, technology and human interface. Okay, so, so Lance, uh, yeah, we are looking for how can technology help? you know, and, uh, and uh, are there any limitations? Yep, yeah, I think uh, we've have seen simulations uh, taking place and uh, in the format of adaptive learning solutions and also some of the uh, solutions like AI chatbot or AI tutors. And uh, it has some pros and cons 
uh, for example, like for some of the roles, it saves some educators time and effort since they, they don't need to be involved as much. And uh, it allows some of the providers to uh, go to market faster, with, especially if they are adopting a turnkey solution. And it also unlocks some of the big data analytics opportunities where they can drill down uh, to study the uh, student uh, behavior and uh, learning progress. Uh, one of the example, as uh, Russ, you, you mentioned, is uh, uh, called Dreambox Learning. It's a uh, AI adapted learning solution, especially for K-12 students uh, in math. And uh, uh, what they do is they can dynamically change the content a student will see based on his or her response to the previous questions. Uh, previous questions. So the new questions uh, that display to them won't be too challenging or too bored. And the uh, system can pinpoint area of confusion and uh, let the students to revisit some of the rele uh, relevant content or give them more practices on the area of confusion. However, although uh, simulation can help uh, teachers, I don't think they can fully replace uh, human teachers because uh, we have already seen some of the limita uh, limitations here because uh, they cannot answer all the questions, especially uh, if you are facing a lot of curious uh, students and they may not provide enough or sufficient guidance. And in language learning space, we, for example, pronunciation, how to get there, how to pronounce the, the, those uh, words correctly, uh, where you curve your town, AI may not be capable of doing that. And uh, since uh, it's a machine, it lacks emotional intelligence and uh, a human teacher has been very good at uh, doing social emotional learning. And uh, uh, that's one of the limitations of bots as well. Uh, one of the example is Babbel, another language learning providers. Uh, their main product offering was pretty much like Duolingo asynchronous content, uh, text-based or pre-recorded video. Uh, but they recently launched uh, live instructor-led uh, courses to better capture customer needs, and uh, they create a new revenue stream for, for their business as well. So in the previous one, asynchronous learning, they charge about uh, 10 bucks per month. And then in synchronized uh, learning space, they, they are charging 10x, uh, 100 bucks or more per month. So these uh, where we can, Babel is realizing the limitation of bots, and they uh, are switching or pivoting to or opening some of the new opportunities leveraging human interactions. Yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks for highlighting the advantages and the limitations. So do you have any uh, you know practical suggestions for uh, for for kind of you know what kind of approach they could take? Sure. Uh, I think uh, there are multiple ways of doing this and uh, education providers can choose to boost uh, student engagement by introducing some of the interactive activities or elements in three pillars of learning, basically the lesson, the assignment, and also the assessment. So in the lesson, uh, they can choose to adopt project-based learning where students can chat uh, with each other and to solve real world problems. And uh, they can also leverage online breakout rooms, as we mentioned, and an interactive whiteboard to really boost uh, student engagement and uh, give students some interactive activities, uh, either a, uh, from a team-based uh, competition or a group chatting. So on the second side, uh, on the second hand, uh, the assessment, uh, I think it's beneficial to conduct a formative assessment periodically where the teachers uh, will have a grasp on how's the uh, students progressing towards the learning goals. And uh, in these uh, formative assessment environment, they can choose to introduce some competitions, give me fun activities. And I'll, I've also seen some of the use cases where they leverage flashcard coupled with audio or video calls. So to give a student more uh, chance to collaborate in teams and work in teams, and in the same times conduct these uh, formative assessment uh, activities as well. And last but not least, uh, in the assignment, uh, they can ask students to submit a video assignment as if they were talking to other people or presenting in front of the whole classroom. And in this way, these type of video assignment not only uh, ensures original work, since the student need to go through step-by-step -step how they arrive the answer, uh, but it can also allow uh, educators to pinpoint an area of confusion as they can see how students is solving a problem and uh, what are the steps that, that they've gone through so they can, uh, they can provide some 
uh, personalized guidance and uh, pinpoint some of the areas of confusion to students. Yeah, uh, so like I think these are good practical approaches and you know, you've broken them into you know, three segments, uh, which is good. And, uh, you know, they also mentioned about videos and you know, new technologies like AI and, uh, you know, bots. So uh, I think the, the newer technology like, uh, you know, AI or even uh, AR, VR, you know, these are, uh, these are early days and they have a huge potential of, you know, changing uh, the way education is happening and, you know, integrating the, you know, human interaction in a much more effective way. But these are early days and I think, uh, you know, we will see more of that. Uh, but what I wanted to spend a little time on was what the videos, you know, so I think you mentioned video as, uh, assignments and we also know that video is used for delivering a you know, huge amount of content. So interestingly, Harbinger has come up with a, uh, with a product, it's called uh, Skim Through. So the, the issue is that, uh, you know, most of the videos are very long, you know, so even if, uh, if a faculty has to correct a video assignment, you know, the videos for a hour, hour and a half and, you know, or, or any duration of even maybe 10, 15 minutes, you know, there should be a better way of getting down to the crux of what is being said in the video. And that is exactly what Skim Through does. So like they say that, you know, get to the hot spots uh, quickly. So it uses theme, uh, theme based, uh, you know, technology, and it helps you skim through a video. And you, you know, with some search words, it can highlight only those things that are important in the video. Or those are, you know, meaningful, and that is what you want to listen to. You know, so it can be uh, sk uh, skimmed either with uh, search uh, keywords, or you can even skim through by using the, the scroll bar and, you know, it'll keep giving you highlights of what the next section holds. So that's very interesting, and I think it's going to be relevant for uh, the tech industry. So I thought I would just mention that. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so June, uh, we would like to listen from you in terms of you know some examples in your language learning. You know how how else technology is helping. Yeah, I mean, so the language learning industry has been evolving very rapidly over the past five years especially, you know, because of COVID, everyone is moving online. And I didn't expect this to be happening this fast, but, you know, the situation, the global situation has been accelerating uh, this advancement of, of technology in the ad tech industry, for example. Uh, three years ago, for example, there were not many companies that were teaching, you know, or being able to teach multiple students all at the same time on, on live streams. Even Facebook officially launched live streams about four to five years ago. So that's not way in the past, um, but I can definitely see that a lot of my competitors and also companies in the language learning industry particularly are moving online and leveraging technology to really enhance the experience for students. Uh, for example, artificial intelligence. I mean, there are really good companies that help students assess their speaking skills and and their levels in real time. They just get asked questions, they answer those questions uh, in, in speaking and they get their score and they get real time feedback. Um, so technology helps students understand where they're at, assess their progress for them to be understand how much progress they're making and what are some of the areas that they could potentially improve and along with that, you know, of course, there are any, you know, many other platforms that are out there like, you know, YouTube. I mean, anybody can learn anything on YouTube nowadays. Uh, there's lots of simulation there. You can learn for free. But again, uh, going back to what I discussed in the beginning of the session where I talked about the two most important components of learning, which comes down to, you know, being able to, you know, gather and also digest information and knowledge, right? That's, that's through simulation. You can learn anything online because it's all open. And the second part that we're missing is, you know, again, human interaction. People need to be able to apply what they learn in their real lives for them to be able to really complete their learning experience. So one thing that I was really fascinate, fascinated by when I started Hollow was, Four years ago, I was relying on social media to talk to our students, to get feedback, to understand the problem that we're trying to solve as a company. And especially I was focused on Facebook because we were trying to help English learners from any country throughout the world 
but we as a company were located here in the United States. So we were, you know, talking to customers or potential students on social media. And I've realized that there were literally over 50 million students uh, learning, trying to learn English on, on Facebook alone. So what they do is that they go to all these English groups, they post something and say something like, hey, I'm looking for a partner who's available, I'd like to practice with you. And they go to WhatsApp, Skype, or Messenger for them to be able to practice together. But the problem is that they're not able to practice when you want to. When you're available, I'm not available. When I'm available, you're not available. And even, even if we get connected, our levels are different. So the the, the journey and process of finding somebody to practice with was just way too long and it was such a pain in the neck. So what I started with for Hollow particularly was I just wanted to connect student to student so they can practice together. So if you look at the screen, so we have this uh, feature called speaking clubs where students are able to bring students on camera and practice together in a small group. So they're practicing uh, around topics that they're interested in. So uh, also, we provide them with topics or curriculums that they can go over together. So we cover both simulation, like the first part where people will have together and learn new materials and knowledge, and, and the second part, which is human interaction. So uh, as a company, we're trying to do our best to cover both areas, which is you know knowledge, gathering knowledge, and also applying the knowledge that you learn. Um, and I think when you are able to combine both of them as a company, you provide so much value and you're covering from the beginning of learning to the end of learning where you're providing so much value that you know um, your students will be able to uh, really learn and apply what they learn uh, in one platform at the same time. Yeah, thank you for sharing that, June. I think uh, uh, you've covered it very well and I think uh, you know uh, emphasize the fact that uh, you know the human element combined with technology, and looked at it from you know two kinds. One is in terms of assimilating, another is in terms of you know the actual learning. So I think definitely uh, technology is helping in building this human interaction. And I like this idea of speaking clubs, you know, because we essentially you know building these communities uh, facilitate uh, you know uh, global dialogues and uh, you know enhance the learning tremendously. Yeah, I think so. That's a, another angle of. Uh, the new uh, environment that we're talking about, social and innovative learning environment. Yes, I think the social angle is extremely important. Okay, so what's the next question? It's uh, addressed to both of you. So what would be some more, I should say, you know, suggestions to tech startups who are operating in this space? Yeah, so I think Lance, you wanna go first? Sure, sure. I think uh, for education providers that are interested in embedding uh, real-time engagement in their applications using uh, one size fit all SaaS solution may not be the best options for them. And if they have uh, enough IT development capabilities, building an uh, online learning platform can be better options since uh, it gives you the flexibility to customize your online learning experience uh, based on your customer needs or uh, use cases, uh, different use cases that, uh, as we mentioned earlier. And it also gives you the options to brand your own uh, online learning platform or product. And it can also enhance uh, data privacy since uh, personal identifiable data won't be, or other sensitive, your operational data, student information, won't be exposed to other SaaS vendors. So building uh, can be a better option for you and as for the implementation method, there are two ways of doing things. One is leveraging the open source WebRTC solution. And the other way is to partner with a, a platform as a service providers. And it has pros and cons of both ends, but uh, we have seen most, uh, a lot of like our customers at tech companies, they have seen challenges of using uh, open source WebRTC solutions due to scalability and reliability issue. Since it may work in a smaller setting, a one on one uh, lecture or small classroom, but it may not work that well when, when you grow up, when, when the uh, scale of the uh, live sessions goes up, especially like lecture hall uh, use cases. And it can uh, be hard to expand globally since uh, you need to own your own servers and uh, it can be a locally uh, optimized, but if you expand uh, to other regions, it may not work. So I believe. Uh, it 
would be great opportunities for you if you want to leverage the expertise of past uh, providers, since uh, they can accelerate your go-to-market time. And they can also provide uh, pre-built engagement tools like we uh, talked about uh, earlier, for example, recording on a breakout room or uh, whiteboard, these uh, sort of like uh, tools for you to help manage the class and engage students. Uh, they, they often provide those by APIs. It can be a great chance for you to uh, just call those APIs and embed them in your system in a way of whatever you see fit. So these, uh, I believe, building solution can be a, a reliable and also scalable way of embedding human interactions in your platform. Yeah, thanks, Lance. I think very important uh, uh, tips for the for the startups. Yeah, June, you want to share some uh, some thoughts for them? Yeah. Uh, so from for me, I would say you know. As much as I'd love to recommend human interaction and, and what we're talking about to every single startup, it, it might not be the best fit for everyone, right? So if I were somebody listening to this session and I'm in the ed tech industry, I would be asking myself, hey, uh, what is the most important thing that I would like to focus on as a startup, right? Because you're not able to cover two things at the same time. You, if you're chasing two rabbits at the same time, you're gonna lose both of them. Um, so there's a reason why big companies like even Duolingo are not able to do both of them because they know what they're good at. It's their differentiator. But I have no doubt companies like Duolingo will eventually adapt and integrate human interaction to, to their platforms. So it really comes down to your startup your timing, um, but at the end of the day, I, I guess, you know, going back to what I talked about, you know, it really goes back to the two major components. Uh, if you're a learning platform, you need to be teaching something. You need to be providing value so people can learn and, and gather knowledge. And if you can, on top of it, provide an opportunity to apply what they learn and interact with other people so that they can ask teachers questions, um, you know, share thoughts and insights with other students learning the same things, you know, so they can share what they learn and, and, and move towards the same goals that they have. Um, so again, for, for startups, in my opinion, focus is the most important thing. Um, but if you think that there's an opportunity for you to be able to apply human interaction to your platform, to your community, um, I would highly recommend it. And that's going to help you improve your user retention, as Lance mentioned, potentially more opportunities in revenue um, and also really take your learning platform to the next level. Great, I'm sure that's uh, very useful for uh, startup guys who are attending here. Yeah, so I would just want to say two things. One is of course, uh, I think focus is extremely important. And the other uh, very important thing is in terms of, I think defining what is the problem you are trying to solve. You know, I think that you have to be very clear about it. And then there is enough technology available to kind of, you know, master your uh, idea into a very tangible product. Yeah, so with that, uh, let me pull in Harsha, who's been uh, moderating this event. Harsha, can you share the Harbinger group overview? Because even Harbinger is doing a lot of work in the tech space. Absolutely. Sure, Olas, thank you so much. So if I talk about Harbinger, Harbinger Group is a global provider of software, product, and services established in the year 1990. So it's been more than 30 years we are in business and serving clients from across the globe, right from North America, Europe, UK, Asia, Pacific, and Middle East. Overall, as an organization of more than 800 employees and individuals spread it across India and US. At a group level, we are three companies, Harbinger Systems, wherein we provide engineering, uh, product engineering services, focuses on edge tech, uh, health tech, HR tech, and ed tech domain. Then we have Harbinger Knowledge Products, wherein we have products for the teaching and learning professionals, to name a few, Reptivity, which is a rapid interactive builder tool, Quillians, and AI-enabled assessment generation tool. Then we have Harbinger Interactive Learning, which is the custom content development arm of the Harbinger Group, focuses on e-learning development, content and transformation modernization services. So this in a nutshell about Harbinger Group. Uh, 
if you would like to know more about us or have any question for us, please feel free to reach out or drop a line. I'll be sharing the email details with you very, very soon. Over to you, Lars. Yeah, th uh, thank you, uh, Arsha. So, uh, so I think, yeah, in a very short time, difficult to talk about the you know specific ed tech uh, ex expertise that Harbinger has, but uh, you know there is lots. So, looking at uh, I think what uh, Agora has shared with us in terms of you know what an ideal uh, teaching learning platform can be, you know, and we have seen practical uh, application from June in terms of how it has made a difference to you know the entire language learning uh, programs, and then we have. Uh, somebody like Harbinger who's contributing in terms of uh, you know, products and services to further strengthen the, the tech industry. So, uh, you know, I will not be surprised that, uh, you know, very soon we may have more than 80% learners saying, we don't want to go back to the classroom. <laughs> you, know, you, want to earn, you want to learn online and we want to learn globally, you know? So we all hope that this uh, where we will all contribute and make it happen. So Harsha, back to you, and you could conclude uh, the session, and then we could take question answers. Sure, Allah. Quick takeaways for today's session. Absolutely, uh, the uh, takeaways would be discern the value of human interaction in the virtual learning environment. Now, we also talked about understand how to embed and leverage human interactions through technology-enabled platforms. Awareness on the extent to which technology could help in simulating human interactions. So with this, uh, we'll uh, go for some question and answers. And audience, please feel free to drop your questions on chat or Q&A panel. I would be happy to bring them up for the panelists. So uh, last we had one question from Arun earlier that was if we can stop uh, or prevent screen recording and online streaming. So if you or the panelists can take this question, would be. Yeah, would any of you want to take that, uh, Lance? You want? Yeah, uh, I think it depends on the uh, use scenario and uh, uh, the reason, uh, the, the thought behind why we want to prevent screen recording in, in online streaming. But uh, uh, from a technical point of view or implementation point of view, visible, yeah. uh, Agora, our solution can enable, uh, enable these uh, sort of features or request. Yeah, I think that uh, that should answer the question. Any other question, Harsha? No, as of now, uh, do you want to wait for a couple of minutes? For the questions yeah, we can, from the audience. Yeah, if uh, something comes up, great. Uh, but I think we could uh, take it to the closure. Sure. And we are always open to getting, you know, answering and interacting uh, for queries and questions online. Absolutely. Absolutely. So thank you, Ulas, and to our panelists for the wonderful discussion and session today. I am sure we all are going back with some food for thought today. I would like to thank you all to and to all our viewers who are joining the session through Zoom and LinkedIn, and you have been amazing for the, for the same. In the meanwhile, if anyone from our audience would like to have more questions or would like to reach out to our panelists, please feel free to drop a line at the email ID given on this slide. Thank you so much. Have a take, have a great one and take care. Thank you very much, Harsha. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Lance. Thanks, June. Uh, we have a question now before we oh, just click okay. out. Okay. So yes. there is a question for Lance. What are the differences you see when a Chinese slash US at tech companies want to use Agora's SDK? Yeah, uh, that's a very good question. So uh, we have customers globally and uh, uh, we have seen the landscape in, in China and in the US as well. Uh, from our experience, uh, most of the Chinese companies at uh, that leverage human intelligence, they were focusing on K-12 space. Basically they are tutoring providers, language providers, like, like targeting younger kids. And since, you know, in, in China, uh, Gaokao, the uh, college entrance exam, is still one of the uh, most important factors 
uh, to influence uh, students' career success. And also, uh, uh, so that's a determining factors of how well uh, they, they, they get a job or uh, uh, lend a, a decent life after the, uh, the college life. So that has been pushing parents to uh, uh, get students involved in after school tutoring a lot. And that's why we, see, we have seen a booming uh, business in China uh, has been on K-12 tutoring space as well. Uh, but in the US, uh, things are a little bit different. We have seen uh, more challenges in higher education space and uh, because they need to, uh, to reform, they need to, we, we have challenges, for example, like very high tuitions. Uh, we, we need to bring down the cost of uh, colleges and, and to alleviate students from uh, student debt. So that, that's the area where we see more applications of this uh, real-time engagement and human interaction. While they are doing that by online, for example, some of the uh, OPM, online program management solutions, they, to, uh, they reduce the overhead uh, involving managing a facility and they uh, make the language more accessible to a lot of students and they can bring down the cost of uh, attending or getting a college degree. And that's where we see more use case in higher education and also uh, your career re uh, readiness space where they uh, equip students with the necessary skills to help them find a job. So we have seen a different uh, dynamic of uh, customer needs or uh, education use cases in different countries. But they are also valid. Uh, they are both valid. Uh, they're just a different uh, business uh, scenario and market scenario. All right. Thank you, Lance. There is one more question for you, uh, adding to what you just explained on SDK. Do you provide SDK for iOS and Android devices as well? Yeah, short answer is yes. We both have uh, WebRTC solutions for those uh, uh, to access uh, the, your online platform through uh, browsers. And we also provide native uh, SDKs. So you can uh, develop on iOS, Android, and your, and your other uh, platforms as well. All right. So we are good. Uh, no more questions. Uh, perfect. Then thank you so much. Thank you again to all our panelists, Olas, and to the audience. If you want to reach out, I have already shared the details. Please feel free to connect. Thank you, Olas, Harshart, and June. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank Take you, care. everyone. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.